Welcome to day one of what I'm sure you're going to find a fascinating program. And a huge well done for making the commitment. Over the next seven weeks, you're going to learn a lot of new things about what really caused you to pile on that extra weight. And let me tell you from the off, it was not your fault, not even in the slightest. My approach to permanent weight loss is about how you live and not about how you diet. While I say my approach, that's not strictly true. This reset is your backstage pass and front row seat to over 50 of the most talented doctors, nutritionalists and health specialists that I've spoken with and recorded in recent years to discover both how to add life to your years and cut inches or centimeters from your waist. Together, we're gonna to help you achieve your desired waistline and increase both your health and happiness. While there are many things that are wrong with most diets, there are mainly three or four lies. The first lie is that to lose weight, you have to eat less and move more. That's a complete fallacy. The next lie is all calories are created equally. Completely wrong. Another myth is that all calories are equal. That's completely, completely not true. And my favorite one is those big, big slimming companies that say, we're gonna help you lose weight. Well, even that's a lie, you see, because there is no such thing as losing weight. What you have to do is instruct your hormones to burn your body fat as fuel. You see, it's impossible to lose weight. Your hormones have to burn it. How would you feel if I told you that most of what you've been conditioned and brought up to believe about your food and your health is simply wrong. Throughout this program, my experts and I will discuss with you how these beliefs were formed. And by the end of your reset, you will wholly understand the truth about your health, your well-being, and your longevity. You're about to achieve something quite marvelous, something that over half the adults in our country would love to achieve but they feel it's impossible to do so. They can only dream about it. And that is permanent weight loss. I want you to see your journey through this program as it really is an exciting challenge. Before we get going, let me tell you a little bit about my story so you can understand where I'm coming from. When my seventh child Lou was born, yep, I have seven, I know that's a lot. I was obese and unhealthily approaching my 50th birthday. Like all parents, I want the best for my children, and most especially, I want to be around to see them grow up. I was so frustrated and terrified by being very fat that I decided to step back from my businesses and spend my days researching my own health. The more I studied, the more furious I became. Furious that for all those years of bouncing between being fat and obese, I'd been fed a big fat lie about what was causing my weight, and ultimately, how to get rid of it. It wasn't that I was lazy or weak-willed. I'd always exercised regularly and continuously eaten what I was told I should eat. But I, for 25 years, I always lost that sort of battle with my bulge. None of the diets I went on worked. I tried really hard. I became a slave to them. And yet, no matter what I tried, I was imprisoned in my fat body. Since I've discovered the truth, my stubborn belly has gone and so of all the other health problems that I had sort of associated with being overweight. And the infuriating thing is pretty much everything I thought I knew about food before was completely wrong. My thinking, just like yours, had been surprisingly shaped by the big food companies and the pharmaceutical industry, who, as it turns out, have very little interest in your health. To them, it's simply about corporate wealth and not your health. What I uncovered was my previous food choices had been shaped by misinformation and brainwashing. All of this from big corporate advertising. And with the onslaught of fast and packaged foods with their highly addictive ingredients, it wasn't just me that made fat, but the majority of adults in our country. So much so that the average adult in Great Britain today is two and a half stone heavy, that's like 16 kg, than the year I was born. Or another way to look at this is, is that in the last 50 years, we've put on more weight than in the past two and a half million years. How do we live healthier, happier, and for longer? 
How do you lose that excess weight permanently? Well, that is what you're gonna discover step by step over the next 49 days. Why does this reset work much better than a book? Well, for a start, I've assembled the who's who of the latest thinking on health, but also because it's interactive. I hope you're excited. I'm really excited to share this journey with you and a big thank you for letting me be part of it. Are you ready to start? Are you ready to regain control of your health? In the westernized world today, most of the time that you and I eat has little to do with hunger. One of the biggest drivers to eating today is simply because we're surrounded by food. It's all around us. We overeat not because we're hungry, but because of marketing, because of our friends, social situations, brightly colored packaging, branding, brainwashing, tricky labels on food. I mean, the list is almost as endless as it is kind of invisible. In fact, research by Dr. Brian Wansink suggests we make 200 decisions about eating each day. Yet 90% of those are made without any conscious thought. Things like eat part of it or all of it, hot or cold, sandwich or the roll, buy the chocolate or leave it for now. So looking at the maths, we make 180 food decisions each and every day without any thought whatsoever. But what would happen if we could change this and be conscious of all food decisions? Making our choices progressively, step by step, more healthily. Choosing the nutritious dense food over that which is bland and full of sugar. What about if you could switch what your brain craves away from the junk food, but towards healthy food? Now here's a question. Do you think you could ever be truly healthy if you continue to leave 180 food decisions every day to your subconscious? Well, the answer actually is yes. Yes, you can. And in fact, you have to. Over the next 49 days, what we're going to do is to rewire your brain to naturally make healthier choices. And here's the exciting thing. I want you to always eat like forever, what you want to eat. My job is to help you change what it is that you want to eat, to help you change what it is you desire. Does that kind of make sense? I have to change what you desire. I have to change what both your conscious and subconscious brain desire. I take, by the way, full responsibility. If it goes wrong, the failing will be with the teaching and not with the learning but it's not going to fail. And I promise you that you will lose that weight that you want to lose. You see, most diets focus on what the dietitian thinks they know about food. They focus on shifting the blame to the dieter when it goes wrong for not sticking religiously to their plan and for the lack of motivation or willpower. For this reason alone, all diets are almost certain to fail. Over 25 years, I personally did dozens of them and they always, in the end, failed. But this reset is not about learning a diet. This reset focuses in the main on what leading psychologists, endocrinologists, and epidemiologists have uncovered about weight loss in the past few years. I don't even expect you to know what these health professions do right now, but you're about to find out. Together, with the help of the leading medical professionals, we're going to rewire your mental cues. We're going to reset what you enjoy eating. We're going to reprogram your senses. We're going to reignite your taste buds, all of which will effortlessly help you reduce your weight and without you ever feeling hungry. And that's a promise. You're never going to feel hungry on this reset. Why don't other diets work? Because they focus on the wrong stuff. We're going to focus on two things very different to a regular diet. We're not going to focus on the belly, but the brain. Then we're not going to focus on calories, but on hormones. Does that sound like a load of BS? I understand how you feel. In fact, many people who have done this course already felt the same way. But what they found is that they lost the weight, like lots of weight, effortlessly. And I'm going to prove it to you in the best way possible your own results. Does that sound fair? Awesome. 
Let me start by telling you that you are hardwired to eat. When? Well, whenever. <laughs> whenever you have the opportunity. It's a built-in survival instinct, and survival is the brain's number one job. Have you ever eaten that last bit of stale crust or had some chicken nuggets uh, and left them to go cold but then gone back sort of a few hours later and they were dried out like cardboard but you still ate them. Maybe you've polished off the entire popcorn box in a cinema or eaten a pack of salted nuts right down to the very end when you pour the last uh, sort of crumbs and salt into the mouth. Have you ever gulped that last mouthful of warm flat pop in a one litre bottle? Does it hurt to answer some of these questions, hey? It does me. It's almost a little embarrassing. But we've all done it. I've done it, all of those things. That's why I mentioned them all. The thing is, you and I are wired to do those things. Because in a world where food was scarce, we had to do it. You plan that way. It's not human to stop and pause after every mouthful to evaluate if you're full or not. It's our mission to finish food, even if it's gone cold, limp, stale, unattractive, unenjoyable. Remember a few minutes ago, I said to you it's not about calories, but hormones. And, and I know what you thought. That sounds a bit far-fetched, Steve. Well, let, give, let, me, let me give you an example of how powerful your hormones are. You must have heard of some of these amazing stories. The story of how a man lifted a car off a neighbour's child who'd got trapped underneath, or the mother who lifted the car off her own daughter. Let me show you a small video. With so much adrenaline, Franklin was able to lift the vehicle off of hypes. He suffered non-life-threatening injuries. All three men involved will be okay. FHP commended Franklin, and some would even consider him a hero tonight. Honestly, I just was somebody who was in a position to help in the right place at the right time, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I had something to do with, a, you know, with life, lives being preserved. Could you do it again? Absolutely. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Wasn't that fascinating? These acts are impossible, right? I mean, these cars weigh like 4,000 pounds, and the world record for a deadlift is like 1,000 pounds. So how is it that a normal person can lift four times that of the strongest man in the world? The answer is adrenaline, and adrenaline is a hormone. It's a hormone to prepare the body for that fight or flight response in times of stress. My point here is simply this, hormones are incredibly strong, and they are incredibly single-minded. Why is all this relevant? Well, the brain's number one job, your brain's number one job, is to keep you alive, and it uses a whole bunch of different hormones to do so. What else do you need to keep you alive? Food. So your brain effectively runs a software program which is powered by various hormones. Whenever you find food, it's gonna try and force you to eat it. You see, actually turning food down goes against your wiring. You're designed to scoff, scoff, scoff. It's survival. But today, you can feast, feast, feast. And because we're programmed that way, that's exactly what we do. It's just natural. We have two million years of evolution and instinct telling us to eat. To eat as often and as much as we can. Is this starting to make sense? It's not your fault you are carrying excess weight. It's just that your brain has meticulously followed its program. Your brain is hardwired to survive and will instruct you via hormones, which I'll explain in full detail later, to eat food whenever you see it. Okay, that's kind of the first message I wanted to get across. I believe that most food companies are more dangerous than even the cigarette companies. You see, we don't need to smoke. It's a choice. But we have to eat to survive. And the food companies know this. So as we'll discuss in length over the next seven weeks, when they add addictive substances and hack your brains in so many ways, ways which we're going to discuss and expose, it really is, in my opinion, evil. Maybe their intentions aren't evil. Their intentions are just about profit and maximizing shareholder investment 
that's their job. In fact, sadly today, that's currently the law. That's all they have to focus on, maximizing shareholder return on investment. But whether it's ethical or not, whether it's evil or not, I guess is a matter of opinion. But one thing for sure, they are adding ingredients and often chemicals to their foods to keep artificially reminding your subconscious brain that it must eat as much as it possibly can. You're being hacked by big food companies on a daily basis. Oh, and while I'm on it, and we're gonna cover this in later days, like in real, real detail. When you see the word natural flavoring, it isn't always what you think. How about if I told you that often natural strawberry flavor was actually an extract from the gland of a beaver's bum? <laughs> Sound far-fetched? Have a little look at this. Food companies know that flavor is what makes repeat customers. So they commissioned Givaudan to create what they hope will be a mouth-watering taste. Givaudan may be the biggest multinational you've never heard of. The Swiss company employs almost 9,000 people in 45 countries providing tastiness to just about every cuisine imaginable. There's a lot of secrecy involved in your profession, correct? Our intellectual property are our formulas. Without that, we have nothing, so there's a lot of secrecy. You really don't want anyone to know. My world is making things taste good. <laughs> Soda pop and chewing gum flavorist Michelle Hagen has helped Givaudan and the food companies make billions with her secret formulas. I create thousands of flavors, so I need somewhere to put them. <laughs> and I have a lot of flavors in here. <laughs> so here are some oranges and tangerines. 750 flavors, orange, tangerine, <laughs> mandarins. Raspberry is one of my favorite. <laughs> I can't even fit all my raspberries on here. How different can raspberries be? Oh, very different, very <laughs> different. Oh, yeah, you can make them jammy, you can make them sweet, you can make them floral, you can make them seedy. Um, it's endless, really. <laughs> and the flavor ingredients might not have ever met a raspberry. I have butyric acid artificial, and then I have butyric acid natural. All flavors are combinations of chemicals. Artificial flavors are largely man-made. Natural flavors come from nature, but not necessarily from what the label implies. For example... Strawberry creations. Strawberry and vanilla flavor can come from the gland in a beaver's backside. So that extract was from CBS 60 Minutes. Frightening, hey? Next time you have some strawberry or vanilla sweets, it might, even if it says natural on the flavoring, it might be extracts from a beaver's bottom. Frightening, frightening. Let me summarize. There are two huge problems in our westernized world, in our modern world. Number one, we are hardwired to eat and the brain hasn't figured out yet that we're not going to starve. In a world where we can get food 24 seven, that's causing you and me and all of us a real problem. Second big problem, Multi-billion pound companies, food companies, mess with your brain. They hack your brain to maximize their profits, preying on your human hard wiring to eat. This reset is gonna help you rewire your brain to help it survive and thrive in the modern world. See, treating the results of being overweight, as all other diets do, don't work. They're like putting a sticky plaster on a severed artery. They just don't work, they're pointless. And then, worst of all, you go and get blamed for not following the program or giving up on it. Only by treating the cause of being overweight can I help you change your relationship with food forever. The first two weeks in the main are going to be about rewiring your brain to survive in the modern world. A world of ever available food. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we make around 200 decisions about food each and every day. And yet 90% of those decisions that you're making around food are subconscious thoughts. To change those 100 automatic food decisions to ones that will positively affect your health needs you to first be fully aware of them. And for that reason, for the first two weeks, you need to carry on eating exactly what you currently eat. I want you in the first two weeks to make me promise not to make any changes at all. Then, 
I'm going to reroute those eating decisions from your subconscious mind to your conscious mind. These first two weeks are going to be the foundation stuff, the psychology, the biology, and the food science, all in plain English. You're going to discover so much that will help you change your relationship with food forever. You're going to be staggered by the truth that we've uncovered. You're going to feel furious about all the lies that you've been fed around food and diet and weight gain and weight loss over the last decades. And one thing for sure, if you interact with me at every stage and follow the program without jumping the gun, you will drop that weight that you want to drop permanently. Not just in the short term, but forever. And that, remember, is a guarantee. This reset is about an everlasting change. You're going to learn the neuroscience of what makes you happy and what gives you pleasure. You're going to learn the neuroscience of what makes you eat certain foods. Sounds a bit scary, a bit scientific. Well, it is. But don't worry, with my brilliant guests, in plain English, we're going to help you change your relationship with food forever. It's not about exercise. In fact, we're not even going to discuss exercise at all in the first four weeks. You see, the reason you're overweight has nothing to do with a lack of exercise. It's just your relationship with food. Those that preach, eat less, move more, they're wrong. So are those that say it's all about calories in and calories out. That's also a big, fat lie. You can't out-exercise your fork. You can't outrun a poor diet. Sadly, too many people see fat people and blame them. Oh, he, she, they don't exercise, they're lazy. It's also very convenient for the food industry to preach it's all about energy in and energy out. But what if eat less, move more was actually a story created by the big food companies? What if these big food companies told you to do this, but knowingly made it impossible for you to do it? What happens is they basically shift the blame to you while hacking your mind to consume more of their products. Convenient, hey? What if they scientifically messed with the food they manufactured and then programmed a certain part of your brain, the limbic primal area, which you will understand this in a lot more detail later, so that you couldn't effectively eat less and move more. But through billions spent on scientific research, instead you became addicted to their product and then you conveniently began to blame yourself. Sounds far-fetched? Surely humans can't be hacked like a computer. Surely big companies would have a conscious, a moral compass. Well, you're about to find out. Let me introduce my first expert, Dr. Asim Malotra. Asim is both a practicing cardiologist and a professor of evidence-based medicine. He's a founding member of the Action on Sugar and has led work highlighting the harm caused by excess sugar consumption across the UK. And if you've been watching during COVID, you may have seen him on the BBC, he's been on Sky, he's been on, well, basically he's been on every channel that is. Uh, here is Dr. C. Malotra. A professor of sports science, a very famous chap you might have heard of. Um, he's a colleague, a friend, you know, an inspiration, Timothy Noakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, if you have to exercise to keep your weight down, your diet is wrong. Right, very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Very too. <laughs> I mean, that is it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's it. And you Simple can't outrun that. a bad diet. That's yeah. the thing, right? You can't outrun a bad diet. Yeah. Until day 30, I don't want you to do any exercise. Unless you're already doing some, we'll carry on with doing what you're doing, but please don't change anything around your exercise routine. Other than maybe try and get outdoors a little more and maybe do a bit more walking. And this is really important. I'm not going to give you anything else at all on exercise for the next four weeks. Now, if you thought this program was big on exercise and you're right now disappointed, then get in touch and I'll give you a full refund. Because you see, to burn your body fat for good and to regain your health, it is mainly about changing your relationship with food. Not in the short term, but forever. It's not about counting calories, but managing hormones. Now, I'm not an endocrinologist, uh, an expert on hormones, but I know a few, in fact, a few times throughout the next 49 days, 
you'll hear from Professor Robert Lustig. Now he's a paediatric endocrinologist and he studies obesity in children. It's such a tough job that three in four doctors in his profession burn out. Why? Because it's so depressing and so stressful. Imagine you sign up to be a doctor because you genuinely want to help people, but instead you witness younger and younger people suffering from obesity and diabetes. So why are kids getting supersized? In fact, thinking about it, why did it used to be called adult onset diabetes? Because 50 years ago, kids never got diabetes. Yet today, sadly, you find children with diabetes all over the modern world. The other month, I was talking to a headmaster of an inner city junior school in Birmingham, and he had five children who were already diabetic. Okay, let's change the tack for a moment. I went off on one then. Uh, why is it not about calories, but all about hormones? Because hormones tell you when to eat and when not to eat. Hormones are chemicals released by glands to send a message from one part of the body to another. They are instructions, but because you and I can't see them, people rarely talk about them in relationship to being fat or obese. But let me tell you right now, being overweight is 100% about hormones. You see, there's a hormone that tells you to eat. It's called ghrelin. There's a hormone to tell you to stop eating. That's called leptin. There's a hormone that tells your body to store fat and to store, more importantly, sugar as fat, and that's called insulin. And there's a hormone that tells your body, instead of looking for food coming in, to burn your own body fat as energy, and that's called glucagon. Here's the first thing I want you to write in your journal. Go to this page and fill in the blanks. It is impossible to lose weight. You must burn body fat. Please press pause right now and just write that down in your journal. Did you do it? Look, I know it feels a bit back to school, but I need you to engage. I need you to participate. I've tested this method and it works. It provides everlasting change, everlasting weight loss, but only and only if you engage. Remember, for everlasting weight loss and to truly add life to your years, a large proportion of this health reset is going to be about understanding the psychology of how and why you eat. Now, I've mentioned hormones a few times, but what are they really about? Before I explain, let me tell you this, something that I've come to realize as a truth. Endocrinologists, those doctors who specialize in hormones, probably hold the key to weight loss more than any dietitian or slimming expert. But Steve, what are hormones, I hear you asking? Well, hormones are molecules, they're chemicals, they perform major regulatory functions uh, in your body. Hormones are effectively your body's messengers. How important are they? Well, they are so powerful that whenever a cell receives them through their cell wall, through their front door, if you like, all other signals within a cell are ignored. Hormones silence all other signals. Hormones trump everything. To shift that body fat, the fat that you assemble through no fault of your own, from your brain excellently doing what it was designed to do, we need to dramatically reduce the hormones that tell you to store body fat and switch on more of the hormones Hormones that love to burn the body fat that you have stored already as energy. Let me explain further. Hormones are chemicals that send messages, like I say, from one part of the body to the other. The intended recipient of the hormone has what are known as receptors on the surface. Often the analogy of a, a key and a lock is used to explain their function. The hormone being the key which floats around inside the body within the bloodstream until it finds a receptor, the lock which it can open. The messages they carry include telling your brain to go to sleep. That's the melatonin hormone. Or to tell your body to store sugar as body fat. That's the insulin hormone. Or a different hormone called glucagon, carrying a message to tell your body to release the fat it's stored back as energy. 
glucagon is going to become your best friend throughout this health reset. He or she, whichever way you want to look at hormones, he or she is the hormone that's going to help you shed your body fat for good. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, there's also a hormone that sends a message to your brain telling you that you're hungry. It's called ghrelin. You're going to learn a lot about ghrelin over the coming weeks. You're also going to learn about leptin, uh, the one that tells you to stop eating. There's a hormone called cortisol. That's your stress hormone, and I'm pretty sure you may have heard of that before. That's going to come up a lot throughout the recess, how to control cortisol, the stress hormone. Then there's the survival hormone that we talked about earlier, adrenaline, that instantly provides a ton of energy to run from a lion or to fight a big mammal. Now you may have noticed I've taught hormones, hormones, hormones. And what you're going to find is that your health reset goes against what is currently taught. It goes against what I describe the current health orthodox. Why? Because it's brought with it so much sickness and so much shortening of life expectancy. It goes against conventional wisdom and old wise tales. As a nation, we're exercising more than ever. And through so-called medical advancement, we now have a pill for almost any ill. Yet, our physical fitness, our mental alertness and our happiness is all on the decline. And the rate of decline is accelerating out of control. This health reset is going to help you dramatically reduce the likelihood of becoming another sick statistic. And it's literally going to help you add life to your years. I hope you're excited. I really do because I'm excited to share this journey with you. You're going to learn that to get healthy and to obtain the body you want, it's all about one thing. I think you now know what that is already. It's about understanding, then managing your hormones. Seriously, that's it. When hormones go rogue, that's when you start to put on that weight and illness slowly starts to develop. I will, over 49 days, explain the full hormone story in a way that very few have ever been able to comprehend. All you've got to do is stick with it and really interact with your journal. The reason this is so much more powerful than any book is that it's going to be very interactive. There's going to be homework. Well, not really homework, but you're really going to have to engage with me. It's not just about the videos. I'm going to ask you to do stuff. To get back in the driving seat of your health, we're going to have to change your relationship with food forever. And to make that change everlasting, you must follow the program through to the very end. You may pause it for a few days, uh, you know, if you have work commitments or, or a holiday, but you must not skip a single session. Weekends are optional. I recommend everybody does them. They're a lot shorter at weekends, but they're more of a recap on the week. But you know, if, you, if you've had enough of me by Friday night, skip the weekend, but make sure you start again on Monday. Do not skip any of the Monday to Friday sessions. We're going to help you change your relationship with food and you're going to love the experience. I promise you that. You won't ever be hungry. And here's the exciting thing. You're never going to need to use willpower. At the end of the 49 days, you will have lost weight too. And whatever you lose within the 49 days, that's just the start. And at this time, that weight loss will be permanent. The crazy thing is, your taste buds have been hijacked by the big food companies to currently crave their chemical and sugar-loaded addictive nonsense. The reality is, good nutrition, natural foods, actually taste much better, but only once you regain control of your taste buds. 49 days from now, you will be enjoying so much more pleasure than you can imagine from eating wholesome foods. But surely your doctor should be telling you all this, not me. Sadly, in the current healthcare system, no doctors are trained about the most powerful preventative medicine of all, real food. You're gonna be shocked to know that in about five years of med school, less than one day is apparently spent on nutrition. And some of my doctor friends say it was never discussed at all. Our country's GPs are brilliant at diagnosing illness and then recommending the right course of medication, but they're not trained in prevention. Yet a comprehensive dietary understanding could save the NHS billions each year and prevent so much tragedy, so much heart disease, cancer, diabetes, strokes, and even Alzheimer's could be greatly reduced. Plus, 
alongside all those things, depression would go down, anxiety would go down, stress levels would be reduced. If only doctors knew about the most powerful medicine of all, real foods. With no standard nutritional training, and as Dr. Malcolm Kendrick said to me in a recent interview, any bit doctors are taught is just useless in isolation. No wonder the nation is left vulnerable to the most sinister killers of all, the standard British diet. Or as they call it in America, and I love this, in America it's called the sad diet, the standard American diet. Seriously, that's what it's called, the sad diet. My aim is to provide you with the most powerful, a comprehensive, preventative medicine course of all. A comprehensive look at nutrition and at dietary education like no other. Sadly, you'll know more by the end of this course than any GP will have ever been taught in med school. And don't get me wrong, there are many fantastic great young doctors that are now taking time out themselves to learn about nutrition. And without them, I'd never have learnt this stuff. In fact, the lack of training in nutrition is why I offer this course free of charge to all registered doctors and nurses throughout the UK. This 49-day health reset program is going to put you back in the driving seat. It's going to help you understand how the big food companies have brainwashed us all. And here are some of the benefits that people have reported after taking this reset. Weight loss, for sure. <laughs> Never feeling hungry. Improved moods, reduced anxiety, reduced frequency of headaches, better skin, reduced chronic pain, fewer colds and coughs, fewer infections, better sleep. For some, it's completely removed their IBS. On top of what people have experienced on the Health Reset and what they've told me and the feedback that we've got, and we love your feedback by the way, the reset should also help you greatly reduce the likelihood of a heart attack or stroke. It should reduce your risk of dementia. It should, in fact, improve your learning capacity, especially if you're younger. And as you're going to learn from one of the UK's leading dentists, it will almost definitely help you cut down on the amount of dental work you're going to need. And that's just your benefits. How about if I also said that by the end of this process, even though your main meals may cost you a little bit more than the cheap fast foods and chemically enhanced packaged food that you might currently be eating. Your overall spend on food and drinks will most likely go down. Let me say this again. The health reset that you're on has three main benefits. It's good for your health, it's good for the health of the planet, and it's good for your wallet too. Why have most people turned over the responsibility of their health to the NHS anyway? Is it because so many people are now ill that we believe that chronic illness is inevitable? Right, I want to play a little game with you. We have to make this course fun. Right, turn to this page in your workbook and feel free to hit the pause button after I ask the question. And I want you to write down the answer, okay? Are you ready? And I want you to really think about the answer, okay? It's got to be interactive. It's got to be fun. But you've got to take part. Right, here we go. How many companies does it take to produce the vast majority of the 47,000 different products that you find in the top supermarket chains? Hit pause, write down your answer. What did you guess? 47,000 packaged foods, what did you guess? Is it 500 companies? Is it 400 companies? How about 300 companies? What did you write down? What if I told you that of all the packaged food in those supermarkets, anything with a label on it, pretty much all of the food you choose, other than the fresh fruit and the veg, is controlled by just 10 companies? Frowning, hey? I'll tell you what, hit pause again, cross out your answer, whatever you wrote, and just write 10. Anyway, just part that knowledge for now. We're going to come back to it lots and lots and lots throughout the course because it's really into, you're going to learn a lot about commerce and why the world is the way the world is and why you put on all that weight and, and it's just not your fault. But let me get back to today's main point. Because we live in an unnatural environment, there isn't another species like us other than our own domestic animals that have access to food 24-7. And most of the food we consume 
as it's controlled by just those 10 gigantic companies, is sadly detrimental to your health. So to be healthy in this unnatural environment, where our freedom of food choice is actually being controlled by just 10 big companies, you have to be unnatural in your thinking. To do this, you have to move your food choices from your subconscious brain to your fully conscious mind just for a while. Eventually, it'll become autopilot. But to start off with, food choices will have to become conscious. You can't do them in the subconscious. We've got to control them in the conscious. Add to the fact that it is natural to want to eat all the time. Then add all the advertising, the brainwashing of the food advertisements, the insertion of addictive sugar, salts and fats, and chemicals into so many food products. And it's no surprise that in the modern world, there are, me there are more sick adults now than there are healthy ones. And it's no surprise that you put on that body weight. It is not your fault at all. Your brain was doing what it was supposed to do, the survival instinct. Then it's being messed with by the big food companies. Not your fault, but together we're going to solve this problem. And it's not just you. The kids are getting fat too. It's just in many of them, they haven't yet clocked up the miles, if you like, for it to be obvious. But rest assured, they are already on the road, many of them, sadly, to chronic illness. As you live in a modern society, if you are overweight, unfit, unhealthy, it's almost definitely not your fault. You have everything stacked up against you at the moment. Sadly, despite what you think, or certainly what you've been told to believe, you're not in control at the moment of your own health, your own outcome. You might think that you have freedom to choose what you eat, but right now you don't. We're living in unnatural times. For two and a half million years, food has never been so readily available. Then add on top of your basic subconscious drive to eat as much food as possible, the fact that those 10 big food companies which dominate all the food that you currently eat, the fact that they inject, infuse chemicals into their products, ingredients that are unhealthy, but ingredients that are there to brainwash you. And then with their hypnotic advertising of healthy, beautiful, fit looking people eating their products as well, then it's no surprise that we're living in times of shortening life expectancy. And let me just stop there, Stefan. People say, oh, we're living longer. Well, sadly, now that's not true. In fact, a male alive today in Great Britain, a male adult alive today in Great Britain, listen to this, has a shorter life expectancy than they did in the 1870s. Life expectancy is getting shorter, not longer, despite what you read. Plus, there's another issue, which we're going to learn a lot about over coming weeks. Over your lifetime, your brain has come to associate certain foods with certain emotions. And therefore, your subconscious brain believes that they make you feel a certain way. Which surprisingly, while the thought might be true, it's not the actual food that provides that feeling. It's actually something else. Now, I know that might sound a bit weird, a bit far-fetched, a bit sort of off-the-wall type stuff. But you're going to discover in weeks to come that some of the emotional eating that you do doesn't actually del deliver the results you think. In the words of Freddie Mercury, how does this sound? I want you to break free. How would you feel if I said that 49 days from now, you won't feel like you've given up a single food at all, but you'll have a feeling of escaping, of true freedom and true liberty. Does that sound good? In fact, I'm gonna guarantee it. I'm gonna guarantee it or I'll give you your money back. And I'll also guarantee, as well as losing weight, that you'll become happier. And if you don't, then you can have your money back. But only by the end of 49 days. You've got to stick with me for 49 days. You might even, sadly, or you might think sadly, put on a little bit of weight in the first two weeks. But by the end of the reset, and you've got to trust me here, and lots of people have trusted me in the past and it's worked for them, I promise you, you will have lost weight for good and you will be happier. Why don't you lose weight at first? Well, in the first two weeks, I don't want you to make any changes to your diet at all. It's really important that you study your own thoughts and your emotions with the food that you eat throughout the first two weeks. 
If we change things too quickly, or if you were to jump the gun, then you won't complete the rewiring of the brain. And you'll be left still feeling that you're giving something up or missing out on something. We need to trigger the escaping emotion. And for that to happen, you're going to have to carry on eating the same way as you have been doing up to now for the, just the first two weeks. Now I've got a question for you. Why do you think you can eat lots of sugary things without feeling too full? Don't worry, don't need to write this one down, it's not in the journal. You see, we have evolved not to starve. Starvation for much of evolution was the number one cause of death and your body is designed, your brain is wired to survive. Why can you eat loads of sugary things? Because your brain is hardwired to search out sugary food. You see, when our primal ancestors came across a fruit tree, they would likely feast on what we call nature's candy until they were completely bloated or were probably sick. Is it a coincidence that fruit ripens at the very end of summer, just before the nights close in and the hunting and gathering became really intermittent and certainly less rewarding? You see, nature's intention was something like this. At the beginning of autumn, I'll create food types full of nutrition and heaps of energy and lots of sugar and design the human species to eat loads and loads of it, building up sort of a reserve of energy to see them through the winter months. To encourage your body to keep on eating the fruit, nature needed a way to bypass the hormone that tells you are full. Remember, we have a hormone called leptin that's supposed to say, hey, stop eating, I'm full. Nature had to find a way to bypass it. And the solution for nature was to treat fructose. And fructose is the sugar we get in many fruits, slightly different to other foods. As a result, humans can keep on eating and eating sugar without any signals of being full. And what if food companies knew this and added lots of sugar, in particular the fructose that you get in, inside a fruit, into their packaged foods? Let's get back to the need to rewire the brain. You see, there's no other species living on land that has access to as much food as they want at any time they want, night or day. And if I've missed one, let me apologize, but I don't think I have. You see, the food that other species have access to is the food that they have developed, they have evolved to eat. It's not being messed with, by the Monkey Food Corporation, or the Elephant Diet Association, or the, the Whales Weight Watching Association. You don't all of a sudden see elephants changing what they eat because of a brightly coloured package sold on a buy one get one free elephant offer. No, an elephant's diet is an elephant's diet. A lion's diet is a lion's diet. A giraffe's diet is a giraffe's diet. Even for humans, the problem of 24-7 food, or should I actually say food-like substances, has only been the case for a few hundred years. It is not normal to have access to food whenever you want it. Because of the historical scarcity of food and the uncertainty of when you were to find your next meal, your brain is hardwired to overfeed whenever food is available. It's a survival instinct. It has control over the limbic area of the brain, what I call the primal area of the brain. So, in the westernized world, we now have a problem. Today, we can binge 24 seven, and binging, by the way, is a natural survival instinct. You are just gonna have that one Pringle, that one pack of crisps, one little handful of Maltesers, that one slice of pizza. But a few minutes later, you go and have another, and another, and another. And why does that happen? It's survival. It's your hormones instructing you to do it. What makes matters even worse, and is reducing life expectancy in our country, is the food we have at our disposal is not normally healthy. And while we're overfed, we're undernourished. The vast majority of food eaten in Britain today is not food created by nature, but food engineered for addiction by those big 10 food corporations. Now here's a clip from the 60 Minute program on CBS where they interviewed food scientists from the Swiss company Givaudan. 
in our fruit flavors we're talking about we want you know a burst in the beginning and maybe a, a finish that doesn't linger too much so that you want more of it and you don't want a long linger because you're not going to eat more of it if it lingers ah <laughs> so i see it's going to be a quick fix <laughs> and then have more and then have more but that suggests something else exactly which is called addiction exactly you're trying to create an addictive taste it's a good word Givaudan are a four billion business, right? Four billion pound turnover business. They're based in Switzerland and their only role is to create flavors for other companies. And well, you just heard it from the lion's mouth. They want to get you addicted. What we're going to do on your health reset is a two pronged strategy. First, we're going to rewire your brain for today's modern living. We have to undo two million years of survival hormones and neurotransmitters, which for the sake of your survival, insist that you gorge on food whenever it is available. We're going to change the emotions we attach to certain foods at a subconscious level. Secondly, I'm going to help you recognize those foods that are nutritionally dense, those that will help you add life to your years, and with the help of nutritionists, chefs and some brilliant doctors, I'm going to show you how to prepare them in a way that provides the same emotions, the same pleasure, the same enjoyable feeling that you get from the foods that you currently eat, the foods that caused you to pile on the weight. I'm going to show you what a real plate of happiness looks like and tastes like. We're going to reprogram your taste buds and return them to how they were pre-commercialized food. We're going to create new emotions and desires for real food. A sense of happiness and enlightenment every time that nutritious, healthy food tantalizes your newly programmed taste buds. Now, let's hear from Tom Watson. Now, you probably know Tom Watson. He's the previous deputy leader of the Labour Party, who himself has gone from very obese to very slender and very healthy. He's going to discuss with me how you regain control of your taste buds. When you come off sugar and ultra-processed food, over time you, you can uh, feel more subtle taste from more foodstuffs. Uh, so, you, you know, I, I, different chocolate tastes different, uh, you, you know, or you can taste different types of coffee or, you, you know, you know, the meat you eat tastes different. Um, and that's great for me because uh, you get to really appreciate eating in the moment, which is another thing I realized was a very bad habit for me, which is subconscious eating. Um, I mean, the thing you realize about big people and negative habits, um, you know, they're very determined people. Uh, they, they, you can work very hard at, at embedding a negative habit. Um, and it's only when you realize that habits are negative as well as positive uh, and that you, you know, you actually take time to identify those negative habits. C can you sort of take measures to break them uh, and being able to savor food in a different way is a really good way of embedded good eating behavior uh, eat, good eating habits I think appreciating the food on your plate the second you put it in your mouth just having a little conversation with yourself about what that taste feels like and how how that's a different taste to how you used to sort of take your food in uh, which for me would be you, you know I'd never give it time to even to, to be in my mouth so that I could taste it. Um, well, you and, wouldn't, we wouldn't, because you, you were addicted to sugar, so it would be a case yeah. of stuffing it in as quickly as you can, because you've got addiction, that, that energy I mean, rush, and, yeah. and, and it's gone in seconds, hasn't it? Whereas as soon as yeah. you come off those carbs, we're, we act a bit more like the French, we take our time with our food, you savour it, you enjoy yeah. it more, and because you're taking it in slower, you tend to eat less anyway, and you just feel more satisfied. You do, it's a, it's a gift really, I mean, it is a, it's a genuine blessing. We're going to hear a lot more from Tom uh, throughout the reset. Let's now really focus in on what today was about. Let's remind yourself, you can't lose weight permanently by willpower, by determination, or while you're hungry. Any diet that includes any of these three will never work in the long run. You'll always put weight back on. Please, please, please stop trying to manipulate yourself. Using willpower and determination is causing the average Brit alive today 
to put 550 pounds of their hard-earned cash down the drain trying to lose weight. Now it's time for a word of caution. If you can't get your partner or your closest friends to do this reset with you, it's really, really important that at some point in the next few days, you sit down and have a chat with them. Why? Well, I'll explain in a moment. The wording you're going to use is really important. You see, your family and your close friends really love you. I mean, they already love you, as the song by Billy Joel goes, just the way you are. They don't think you need to change. Well, they probably do think you need to change a little bit, but they're never going to tell you that you're fat, right? I mean, I always say, nobody tells you that your baby's ugly. <laughs> it's like the emperor's new clothing type thing, yeah? So they're going to try and persuade you that you don't need to lose weight. They will say stuff like, life's too short. You could step out on a bus tomorrow. They're probably right, actually, you could step out on a bus tomorrow, but you actually wouldn't deliberately choose to do that, would you? Now, when this happens, you almost need to say verbatim the following. Ready? Look, I know you care about me, that you, that you love me, but I need to do this for me because I want to be healthier. And I also know that some of the things I'm doing might seem a little bit crazy. And of course, they aren't the current norm or what everybody believes to be the current norm. But I'm enjoying doing them and the changes I'm doing are for me. Now, if you're still facing some questions or comments, you can add something along the lines of, should you want me to be around with you for as long as possible, don't you? Trust me, once they start seeing the results, things might change. They will suddenly get it, but certainly early on, you'll most likely have to have this conversation. Another few that I've used in the past and other people doing the reset have used is, I'm so happy that I'm escaping the devastating trap of the processed food industry and trusting the farmer and not the scientist. Or well, one lady wrote to me recently, she said, uh, she said the following, I'm really happy that my life is no longer dominated by devastation. Well, that's it for today. But before you go, and before you tune in tomorrow, and by the way, you've done absolutely brilliantly to stick with me so far. And while you not, might not have realized it, you've hopefully picked up lots and lots of things today. We've already started to program the subconscious brain. Three things I want you to do before we talk again tomorrow. First, please don't make any changes for, to your food today. I'll explain why tomorrow it's imperative, but at this point, I don't want you to change anything. Next, please weigh yourself in the morning. First thing before we get going, before you, uh, you get up in the morning, before you do anything, before you even clean your teeth, I want you to jump on your bathroom scales. Uh, and in fact, it's only one of three or four times I'm going to ask you to do that over the reset. In fact, we're probably not even going to ask you to do that for two more weeks or so. If you haven't got uh, some scales, we need to get some sort of measurement. So if you've got a tape measure, maybe measure your, your, your waistline. Uh, if you haven't got a tape measure or scales, if you've got a bit of string, get a piece of string, tie it around, put a little bit of a mark on it, and then we can measure it later on. But it really is important that you get some sort of measure so we can see how we're getting on uh, over the coming weeks. Next, and finally, what I'd like you to also do, and you know the one I'm talking about, by the way, I need to take that photograph, that sort of sideways on one that shows how you look today. Don't be embarrassed. Don't forget, it's not your fault that you're carrying all that weight. But I know through time and time doing this again with thousands of people, that you need a photograph at the beginning to show you where you don't want to return to. Don't want to look down on yourself, don't want to beat yourself up. That, that, that excess weight is not your fault. You are slender already underneath the excess fat that's been put on because your brain's been doing what it was supposed to be doing and also all that brainwashing of those big food companies. And please, please, those two things, or well, three things, don't change your food today, We'll explain why tomorrow. Get on the scales, write it down, put it in your journal, and take that side on photograph. That'd be really, really helpful for our progress as we move forward. Until tomorrow, have a great, great day, and well done for sticking all the way through day one. Actually, it's probably one of the longest days, one of the hardest days. And I promise you, by not focusing on calories, looking at hormones, changing your relationship with food, you're gonna lose that weight once and for all.